perfect you are my God. Perfect you are my God. Righteous and holy in all of your ways. Revealing your glory in all that you do. All men will worship you. Perfect you are my God, righteous and holy in all of your ways, revealing your glory in all that you do. I will praise your name, for you are the only Lord and King. I will worship you, I will praise your name, my desire is to and holy in all of your ways, revealing your glory in all that you do.
Thank you so much. May you uh, be truly glorified and worshiped through uh, the lives of these remnants uh, that have gathered here at this time, Lord. Uh, with all of our hearts, mind, soul, and strength, God, we desire to love you. Uh, but God, may we be able to know that love of, uh, may we be able to know your love uh, by being able to really enjoy and understand who Jesus Christ is, that he is the way, the only Christ. Uh, that that Christ is our only way for salvation, Lord. Uh, God, may we be able to enjoy Emmanuel um, as we worship here. May we be able to see how God, it, uh, how God, you are always at work within the lives of the remnants. May they be able to really enjoy their identity and authority. May they be able to see that everything is inside of your gospel. We thank you so much. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. We haven't done this one in a while, but let's praise this one. Lord, I worship you alone, God's love. Lord, I worship you alone. And I come before your throne. You delight in me, rejoicing over me. Only by your love can I worship you. Your love breaks down every wall. The restoration you offer to all. The perfect is your love for me. Within your love I'm free. To know the love of Christ in my life overflowing. Flooding over me. Oh, 
worship you alone And I come before your throne You delight in me, rejoicing over me Only by your love can I worship you Your love breaks down every wall Restoration you offer to all Perfect is your love for me Within your love I free No glory of God above is no Let creation bow in all of your glory Reveal your love through me Jesus, he is the Christ. He's the answer to everything. Jesus, Jesus, he is the Christ. He's the answer to everything. Jesus, he is the Christ. Let us tell it. Jesus, he is the Christ, he's the answer to everything. Jesus, he is the Christ, let us tell it to the world. The King of kings who came to crush the devil's power, the Lord of Lord who is the only way to God. The Lamb of God who set us free from sin and death. Let us thank Him, let us praise Him, proclaim to all. Jesus, He is the Christ, He's the answer to everything. Jesus, He is the Christ, let us tell it to the world, the King of kings. The King of kings who came to crush the devil's power. The Lord of Lord who is the only way to God. The Lamb of God who set us free from sin and death. Let us thank Him, let us praise Him, proclaim to all. Jesus, He is the Christ, He's the answer to everything. 
is the Christ. Let us tell it to the world. Last time, Jesus, he is Jesus. He is the Christ. He's the answer to everything. Jesus, he is the Christ. Let us tell it to the world. Let's praise one last one here together. So good and he's so good to God. together. God, we thank you so much. Uh, God, we desire to resolve uh, inside of our hearts uh, to be able to live uh, only for the sake of the gospel, Lord. Uh, may the word, prayer, and evangelism become um, the lifestyle of these remnants, Lord. Uh, may they be able to, wherever they go, uh, be a person of prayer. Wherever they go, be a person of praise. Wherever they go, uh, be a person that can confess and proclaim that Jesus is the Christ, Lord. Uh, God, during this time of worship, may all the force of darkness be bound and broken. May the remnants with one, uh, with, with one purpose uh, be able to receive all of uh, the blessings and answers and grace, the covenant that you have prepared for us today, Lord. Uh, God, we thank you so much, and we pray all these things. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Hi, remnants. Check out your prayer books. Open up to Wednesday. You, O child of God, three, two, one. Without spot or blame until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, may I pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness, and fight the good fight of faith, and confess that God, you are the blessed and only ruler, <coughs> the King of kings and the Lord of lords, who alone is immortal and who lives in unapproachable light, whom no one has seen or can see, and to you be the honor and eternal dominion. Amen. Prayer for evangelism missions, three, two, one. May I not bow to the threats of the world, but grant me to speak your word with great boldness while you stretch out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Sit up straight, back off the back of your chairs. Let all the bad air out. Inhale. Hold. Even now the triune God is at work, always and forever. 
Even now, God is working by his spirit and the word. Father, even now, the Christ is getting rid of the three curses, disasters, hell, Satan, as the prophet, priest, king, and accomplishes salvation, son. And even now, unseen to our eyes, the Holy Spirit is working upon us. Spirit, deeply enjoy this. Exhale. Inhale. Hold. What is arising right now? Our background is heaven. The time you spend in prayer is the time you bring God's kingdom here on earth. To bring God's kingdom means while you're praying, invisible to your eyes, God mobilizes angels for his errands. Exhale. Inhale. Oh, you have an amazing authority, which means power from above. You begin to break down the background of hell, bind Satan, break down all the forces of darkness. Exhale. Inhale. Hold. Then five great strengths will be made for you. Spiritual power, intellectual or mental power, physical power, financial or offering power, man or social power. Exhale. Inhale. Hold. There is something more important than all of these. Not only your heart, but your brain will be strengthened. Only then can you become summit, do well in your studies. Exhale. Inhale. Hold. Heaven, this is our background. By the mystery of the triune God, enjoy God's kingdom here on earth. Then we'll go to heaven. Just wait for God's kingdom. It will surely come. But many people don't wait. Everywhere you go, God's kingdom will come. As Joseph waited, God's kingdom came. He went as a slave into prison. He was still able to wait. Exhale. Inhale. Hold. Hell. We don't die and go to hell, but people are living a hellish life on earth. Having the background of hell, they go to hell when they die. Satan continues to follow them and torments their life. At the end, drags people to hell. Exhale. Inhale. Hold. Angels, with the background of heaven, angels are ministering God's work. When we die, they usher us to heaven. Wherever we go, God's, God mobilizes his angels. Exhale. Inhale. Hold. Spiritual state. What's more important than answers is my spiritual state. This is where everything begins to be solved. Help me to have a healthy spiritual state that rides the flow of the covenant and is filled with the Holy Spirit always. Help me to listen to the voice of God and not the words of people. Exhale. Inhale. Hold. Church, it's the shadow of the throne of heaven and the path to which we get there. Exhale. And inhale. Hold. People that remnants must meet and become leaders with the gospel, successful people with the gospel, fellow workers with the gospel. Exhale. And relax. Let's pray our remnants prayer for the church. Dear God, bless the pastors to be only the gospel, evangelism, and prayer. Bless the church officers to save the remnants, church, field, regions, occupations. Bless the young adults to be prepared as church officers, be the hands and feet of the pastors, and a platform for the remnants. Bless us to have the imprints, roots, nature of 
the word, prayer, measures, missions, academics. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's get even more specific upon our HNPC journey. Speaking of HNPC, HNPC got a new church sign in our parking lot. Pastor or evangelist to be what? Devote for only prayer and the word. In other words, word, prayer, evangelism. Only whoopee. We pray for our elders to do what? Stake the rest of our lives for saving the church, saving the remnants. We pray our deaconesses can be the mommies of the church, right? Our senior deaconesses, our deaconesses. And we pray for our deacons to do what? Help the church run smoothly. Do we need a pat, pat, pat on the back, back, back for a job well done? Nope. Whatever, whatever we're doing for, for in church, it's for God, right? And for our deacons to save the, the field, because there's so many souls to be saved. The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. We pray for our young adults to be and save the elites or the successful people in this world. And what about the remnants, us Grutuggies? In Prince Roots, Nature of the Covenant, Vision, Dream, Image, and Practice. Let's get even more specific. What is CVDIP? So, not what we want, but, oh, not that part. All right, C. What does C stand for? Covenant. God's promise. One, three, eight. It's knowing that God's in absolute control. So see this ahead of time. See that God, our life, is already in God's hands. See it ahead of time. Vision, seeing God's plan. Right? What's God's plan for us? World, evangelization. Have it. It's mine. Ahead of time. Dream. What's our dream? Specific dream for world evangelization, right? Which is God's promise. Um, you will be my witnesses to the very ends of the earth. That's a promise. And enjoy it. Since God promised us, whether we face ups or downs, it's okay. We already know the end result. Image, right? How do we draw the image or picture of our life? Through God's word, through prayer, upon our covenant journey. And win, win without fighting. Victorious, conquer ahead of time. P, practice, right? God's masterpiece for God's goal. Because God already fulfilled it. It's already taken care of. All right, today's message, realize, or realization, just this. Or just write it, just write realize once. You don't have to write it. 12 times. All right, take a few seconds to write this one word down. Realize. What does realize mean? Like you understand it. I get it. You know it. We need to realize ahead of time. Who's that? Our remnant with blue light glasses. I trust that you remnants are done. Today's Bible verse, Colossians chapter 2, just verse 3. Colossians chapter 2, verse 3. Write this in parentheses, under or next to your title. And what's Colossians 2, verse 3? We will read it in one voice. Ready? Three, two, one. In whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Amen. Right? Inside of Christ is knowledge, is wisdom. It's all blessings. Today's lesson objective, Jesus' life, Jesus' power, to experience the working of the Holy Spirit. Realize. All right, take a minute to write this down. Realize. You've you got to know. You got to understand ahead of time.
Now, what do we need to realize? How do we need to realize? Twenty five more seconds. Twenty seconds. Fifteen seconds. And a ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. And a one. Moving on. Okay, there's something we need to realize about my life, or your life. My life. And I like how David put it. David said, when he was standing before Goliath, I will show you that the battle and life and death is in God's hands. So there's something we need to realize or know about my life or our lives. It's that it's in God's hands, right? Right? It's not my life. I'm not the master. But who's the master of our life? God is. Right? Now, in my life, since it's not really my life, my life is inside of God's absolute control, we need to do something as remnants inside of our lives. And what is that? We need to enjoy the gospel. Right? We became God's precious children by God's amazing grace through Jesus, who is the Christ. He solved us. He solved the original sin, made us his precious children, remnants. So we need to enjoy this, right? What do we need to enjoy? The gospel through prayer, right? How do we enjoy the gospel? Through prayer. So enjoy. What does enjoy mean? I, I think the word joy is inside of the word enjoyment, J-O-Y, which means are you guys joyful or happy as you guys pray? Or are you, is it boring? Or are you forcing yourself to pray? Oh, I have to pray. My parents are forcing me to pray. Or is it such a happy time for you? Which one seems normal? Happy, right? So through our summit TAV, our summit time, we enjoy the gospel. And you know what? As you pray, being thankful for being his, God's child, that God's being with us, that we're inside of the CVDIP journey, then you will be joyful, right? So think, remnants, am I really enjoying the gospel through prayer? Or am I forcing myself? And is it boring? Do it during your happy time. And am I actualizing or am I actually praying at all? God gave us an amazing blessing of fellowship and being with us. And we can enjoy that through prayer. So am I actually even praying? Now, am I doing it because I have to? Like, it's on my checklist. I need to do scheduled prayer. I need to do summit time. Or are you doing it out of a joyful heart? Think about it. Hmm. Okay, well, if you're not, let's come up with a plan. So when are you guys enjoying the gospel through prayer? Or when are you doing your summit time? Are you doing it in the morning, in the dawn, just like uh, shepherd boy David? Mm, maybe we could find a time during the day I know some remnants are doing their summit time while there's a break during your remote learning. Are you doing it in the evening or afternoon, after school? Or before you go to sleep at night, find a peaceful, happy time where you can focus and concentrate on God with no distractions. And it should be a happy, joyful time. If, you're, if we're not doing this, then start, right? Think about when can I do my summit time? How many times should I do it? Maybe it's three, three times a day too hard? Then cut it down to two. No, it's two times too hard? Then cut it down to one, right? 
So we have our materials, our Summit TAV books, we have our prayer books, we have our deep breathing uh, books, we have our notes from our messages, we have our prayer journal. Find what's joyful to you and challenge yourself little by little. How about how? How can I pray? How can I enjoy the gospel through prayer? Uh, what were uh, Teacher Jinster's silly homework assignments? Going up the stairs and praying? Brushing your teeth? Uh, hand sanitizer? Something you guys do in your daily routine? Yeah, sure. If that works for you. Or if you're able to sit down quietly at your desk and do your summit time? Sure. If you uh, want to get down on your knees and pray, looking out the window at night, sure, go for it. If you're on your knees and you're praying on your bed, go for it. Mm. Do you want to pray while you exercise? Go for it, right? So do your summit time during your most happiest, peaceful, joyful time, and eventually your summit time and your scheduled prayer time will become the most joyful and happy, peaceful time. So challenge yourself little by little, remnants. Where can you enjoy the gospel through prayer? Mm, is it, do you do your summit time at home, at church, uh, at a park, in your neighborhood, as you go for a walk? Find a place. For, this, for you guys to do summit time. Now, what are we doing during summit time? Some remnants, uh, we might just read what's in our prayer books. Remember, what, do, what does Teacher Jinster always remind you? Don't just read it, but actually pray it, right? Because you're talking to God. You're asking God. You're thanking God. Don't just read it. Don't just do it. You need to concentrate. And who are we concentrating on? as we do our summit time, on God, right? Concentrate on God as you pray, as we do our Bible writing, Bible reading, as we praise, as you do your summit TAV books, as you do prayer journal. Don't just do it, remnants. Do it concentrating on God, okay? You guys should be talking to God nonstop. And who did this? We learned about Remnant Daniel, who prayed three times a day. He did it in his room with the windows open, uh, and he got down on his, on his knees, and he prayed, looking outside, praying out loud. So Daniel found uh, his summit time, a time where he can enjoy the gospel through prayer. Why? Because he realized that his life is in God's hands, right? So Remnant's... Uh, find a time for your summit time. Next point. Now, as we enjoy the gospel through prayer, there's something God helps us realize about our academics. Academics is another word for your studies or for school. Now, as you enjoy the gospel through prayer, there's something God helps us realize about our school and our studies. Mm-hmm. Studies. Now, remember, as you enjoy the gospel, how? How do we enjoy the gospel? Through prayer, right? As we enjoy the gospel, Jesus being the Christ, the answer and solution to all problems, there's something that God helps us realize, realize about our studies. Now, there's so many uh, students who don't know why they have to go to school. Mr. Lee, why do I have to go to school? Why do I have to do this? And then they don't care about their grades. Or they study hard and try to get good grades, but they don't know why they need to. Even young students and even older students too. So as we enjoy the gospel through prayer, we have a reason to study, right? As we realize that God's the master of my life, that my life is inside of CVDIP journey, as we enjoy the gospel through prayer, 
God gives us a reason to study. Now, the reason we study is not to get good grades. Of course, that's good. The reason why we study is not to uh, be liked by our teachers, by our parents. The reason why we study is not so that we can get a, a good job, get lots of money, be famous. No. Why do we need to study? You know, I hate talking about myself, but I will. So in high school, uh, we, dear Jennifer was crazy about evangelism, and I would get these evangelism tracks, um, and then I would put it on all the bulletin boards in my high school, and then I thought, oh, this is evangelism. But then I didn't really care about my studies. So uh, even though I shared, I gave gospel material to my teachers, the teachers, they looked down on me because I don't pay attention in class. Um, I refuse to do work. I picked fights with other people. But then I was putting posters all over the high school thinking that was evangelism. And then, as I was enjoying the gospel through prayer, God helped me realize, wait a second, I have to study so that my teachers uh, would know that, oh, God's with the student, that God's giving him strength and wisdom. So studying, it, I studied not for the sake of getting good grades, but so that I can share the gospel to my teachers. And then study, I studied hard. God gave me wisdom and strength to study. And eventually, uh, grades got up. The teachers saw how much I changed. And then I shared the gospel materials with them. And then they started to change. And one of my science professors, they're like, oh, yeah, I started uh, singing for my church choir and stuff like that. So we're not studying uh, for the sake of good grades or myself, but we're studying for the sake of evangelism and missions, right? We have a reason to study. And that was just in high school. So God prepared me now for college, and to, I made a mission, or God gave me a mission, give joyful gift to all your professors. Every single professor I had, I shared, I gave a joyful gift. Now, if they want to receive the joyful gift and actually read it, would they read it uh, if a student, a bad student gave it to them or a good student? Probably a good student, right? A student who performs well in class, the professor will probably actually take a look at it so there was my reason to study, right, for the sake of the professors, for the sake of evangelism and missions. And God made studying super easy, right, because my motive was evangelism and missions, not good grades. And then God put me on top of the school. Why? It's, it wasn't me. It was for the sake of evangelism and missions, okay? So don't switch the order. Studying will become a piece of cake. Piece of cake. Why? Because inside the gospel are all treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And once you know this, you'll be able to wait. As you study, uh, God opens your spiritual eyes to what? To see the world, see this age. And as you study, the more you study and study and learn about the world, the more and more you realize, oh, the world insi is inside of Genesis chapter 3, self-centeredness. Mm, the more and more and more you study, the deeper and deeper you get, the more you realize, oh, the world is material-centered, only uh, focus on physical things. The more and more and more you study, you learn, oh, Oh, people are chasing after success and making a name for themselves. You could especially learn this in like history class. The more and more you study, you learn about oh, the different cultures of darkness, idols in the world. I like history class. Uh, you you can you could see a lot of these twelve problems in history class and even science. And the more and more you study inside of the gospel, you realize, oh, people are inside of darkness, 
the six states of non-believers, and people don't know how to find an answer. And you could see this a lot in when you're studying to become a teacher or studying to be like a doctor or a scientist, psychologist, because you see so many people who have problems that we, they don't know how to fix, right? So the more you, you study inside of the gospel, the more you see these 12 problems, the spiritual problems, and how the answer is only Christ. And you start to realize Oh, grades, um, studying, yeah, it is important, but it's not that important. Uh, and there's, we know so many stories about famous people who just quit school because they didn't think it was that important. Don't focus too much on school. Of course you should, but put evangelism and missions first. Put worship first. Just like the three friends, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. If they cared more about uh, their success and their studies, then would they have gone inside of the fiery furnace? Probably not, right? But they put evangelism and missions first. They put giving glory to God first. So fiery furnace, oh, no problem. Okay, and as you enjoy the gospel inside of your studies, God helps us realize things about the spiritual world, the spiritual stuff. He starts to help us realize what's really, really important. So what is really, really important, remnants? What is our mission, our number one mission? Doesn't matter how young you are, how weak you are, it's to reach the spiritual summit first, right? God helps us realize the spiritual things about his kingdom. God helps us realize the spiritual things about him being the triune God. What, the, what does God the Father do? He gives us the word. He works through his spirit. What does God the Son do? Even right now, destroys disasters, hell, Satan, prophet, priest, king, right? We do this during deep breathing. What does God the, the Spirit do? He works right now. He's within us. He guides us. He gives us strength. He works in our lives, right? We start to realize these things, and the Holy Spirit inside of us starts to teach us. God helps us realize that, oh, God mobilizes or sends his angels ahead of us, guides us, protects us. And he helps us realize, oh, we need to fight the spiritual battle. As you study, wherever you go, forces of darkness run away. Just like they ran away from Remnant David when he uh, enjoyed the gospel through prayer, through praise. And once we become spiritual summit, spiritually mature, as we do our summit, uh, TAV, time, attitude, vessel, we'll be able to wait. Right? We'll be able to wait for God to work through his word, through his spirit. We'll be, we'll be able to wait for God to mobilize and send his angels. We'll be able to wait for God to break down forces of darkness. And as spiritual summit, we reach a mature spiritual state or a state where we can realize God's spiritual blessings, if that's too hard of a word, spiritually mature, right? Doesn't matter how, how young you are, how weak you are, God helps us become spiritually mature. Just like Remnant David, even though he was a young shepherd boy, he was spiritually more mature than even the king. And us remnants will be just like that. How? When we enjoy the gospel through prayer, God will help us realize these things. And God will help us realize, oh, what's truly, truly important and our final mission, which is raising the remnants, right? Uh, don't realize this too late. We need to realize this ahead of time. Right? Uh, many adults, they get older, they become 
my grandparents, and then they realize, oh, I need to uh, save the remnants. Of course, God will work, but it's kind of late, right? It's better for us to realize now how important it is to raise remnants. So uh, we have remnants who already know that when they grow older, they want to train and teach other remnants. Yeah, that's a great uh, dream to have ahead of time. And once we realize this, our mission, spiritual summit, saving the church, God will use us. Gum, God, use me, acronym, gum. So chew gum, not literally. God, use me. And which remnant was spiritual summit, who, who knew about the spiritual things and lived his life for raising remnants? Hmm, remnant Elisha. Remnant Elisha received a double portion of the Holy Spirit, right? He knew about the spiritual things, God's kingdom. And then he carried out the mission of raising the remnants, right? In Remnant City or the Dothan City. 7,000 disciples and I'm sure more. Okay, so how does God help us realize these things about my life, about my academics or studies, about the spiritual world? Through God's word, right? God's word helps us realize these things. God's word helps us become spiritually mature and know about his spiritual blessings. So what do we need to do? Uh, well, the Holy Spirit actually has to, has to work in our lives, right? We can't realize these things on our own. We don't do anything by my own strength. The Holy Spirit needs to work, which means keep praying, remnants, God, through your Holy Spirit, help me, help me to realize your word. And that's why we need to focus 100% on God's word during worship, during your summit time, even through prayer journal, Bible reading, Bible writing. Concentrate. God, help me to realize your word. And the Holy Spirit inside of us will help us remember, will teach us of God's word. Right? So the Holy Spirit will teach us and help us realize God's word. So how can we have this happen? Well, through our summit TAV time, summit time, summit attitude, summit vessel, through your summit time, keep holding on to God's word, keep diving or going deep into God's word, and then let the Holy Spirit remind you and teach you all these things, okay? So summit time, and God will help us realize through his Holy Spirit. All right, talent time. Zinzendorf. I put a question mark because I couldn't find this story, but I did hear it from a message. So there once was a king, and in he, the king had a dream. A dream. And in the king's dream, the, the dream told him, all right, build a church. And the name, there was a name that kept popping up in his dream. And that name was Zinzendorf. Uh, so the king is like, Zinzendorf? What is Zinzendorf? So he, act, he asked his nobles and the people below him who worked for him, what is Zinzendorf? And nobody could figure it out. Uh, and then some, someone said, oh, maybe it's a name. So the king said, all right, go look throughout the entire kingdom and look for this Zinzendorf. So soldiers were sent. Armies were sent. People were sent to look throughout the entire kingdom for this Zinzendorf. And the king started to build the churches. Now, they eventually found Zinzendorf, who kept popping it into, in the king's dream. And do you know who this Zinzendorf was? It was a little boy. This young boy named Zinzendorf, poor boy, not from a good family, but what the Zinzendorf did while the king was making the churches, building the churches, this little boy would, would feed 
the horses that they were using to build the church and to move uh, the materials and resources. And then this little boy, all he did was he was feeding these horses. He was helping out little, uh, little by little, maybe one brick at a time. And the king found this Zinzendorf, and eventually, through, his, through this little young remnant or this young boy's uh, heart or work, this small work for the sake of the church and feeding the horses, the churches were named after the Zinzendorf. And so Zinzendorf, his name is on the churches. Eh, look at that. Small works of a remnant paid off. Right? God bless them a lot. And prayer for 237 Nations. Today we're going to pray for Scotland and Switzerland. Uh, Christ Christianity is the, the state religion for these nations. But we still got to pray for them, right? So they can understand the gospel uh, accurately and correctly. So let's pray for Scotland and Switzerland. And that's ready. Three, two, one. Dear God, may you bless Scotland and Switzerland so that the gospel may enter and revive these nations. May disciples arise and shine the light of the gospel here. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Okay, we're going to gather for hangouts. Forum, keep up your prayer books. Uh, reminder on your homework. Let's do, not this Sunday, I'll give you two weeks to complete this homework assignment. It's a flip book. Speaking of flip book, your flip books came in. I was going to give it to the remnants who came today. But I'll give uh, Emma and Sajinis to Dad. Okay, here's your flip books. All right, so what do you have to do for your flip books? A, uh, a story from the book of Daniel. But some remnants chose to do a different Bible story. That's fine. But two weeks, right? Take your time. Uh, I have your flip books. If you need it, I'll give it to you on Friday. And if you are not at church on Friday, then I'll give it to you Saturday. If you're not at church on Saturday, then I'll give it to you on Sunday. But you have two weeks. And that's that. All right, let's pray, remnants. Dear Lord, thank you so much. May you bless our precious remnants. Through your word and through the working of your Holy Spirit, help us to realize that you're in charge of our life. Help us to realize our studies. Help us to realize the things of the spiritual world. And may you bring us to the spiritual summit. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.